Up next, we bring you the latest developments from the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Solar-powered Vikram and Pragyan will be carrying out experiments this week as well on the lunar's south pole. Take a look at these interesting findings that are sure to change the space research game. Smile, please. This one click captures the emotions of a billion dreams. The Pragyan rover clicked not one but multiple photographs of the Vikram lander with its navigation camera. This becomes the story of two space buddies, or if we may call them, best friends, Vikram and Pragyan. As India walks on the moon, here's digging into the details of this milestone mission. Chandrayaan 3 marks many firsts. India's first soft landing on a celestial body. We have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. India's first rover operation on a celestial body. And humanity's first ever soft landing near the lunar south pole. Each of these are historic in their own way. Let's remember that the Indian lander and rover have one more week or one half of the lunar day to study the areas near the landing site. Chandrayaan 3's Vikram lander and Pragyan rover are completely dependent on harnessing the power of the sun. This is precisely why ISRO has planned the mission duration of Chandrayaan 3 for exactly two weeks. These two weeks are when it will be lunar day on the moon and this is the time when it can completely charge its batteries using its solar panels and thereby conduct all its in-situ experiments. So far the Chandrayaan-3 probe has completed one week near the lunar south pole. India's space agency ISRO has been able to demonstrate successful operation of all the science experiments or payloads on board the propulsion module that's circling the moon, the lander module and the six-wheel rover. One of the biggest takeaways is the findings of sulphur. Using its onboard laser-induced breakdown spectrometer, the Pragyan rover has been able to unambiguously detect the presence of sulphur near the lunar south pole. In addition to this, there are at least seven elements that it has identified. This includes aluminium, iron, titanium and silicon. Let's also remember that these are just detections. Oxygen also has been detected in this list. These are only preliminary findings and the actual findings and the proper data will take months for it to be analysed and for tangible outcomes to be reached. The temperature analysis of the lunar soil is also being analysed at the landing site near the South Pole. In earlier missions, soil temperature has been measured only in equatorial regions of the Moon. During the lunar day, it is observed that the surface temperature of the lunar topsoil is more than 50 degrees centigrade, which is equivalent to India's desert temperatures during the peak summer. When the temperature probe was lowered 8 centimetres into the lunar soil, the temperature dropped a whopping 60 degrees centigrade. 8 centimetres beneath the top soil, the temperature is minus 10 degrees centigrade. That's the temperature you'd see in the coldest regions of the Earth during the onset of winter. This indicates many things. For one, that the lunar soil is a poor conductor of heat, meaning it's a great insulator. However hot it gets on top, down below it's freezing cold. So hopes are very much alive that there could be frozen water in these regions. There's no doubt that Chandrayaan-3 is the clear front-runner in exploring the lunar south pole. At least 10 missions from space agencies and private firms will be lifting off in the next 12 months and heading for the moon. That's how high a priority lunar exploration has now become globally. In so many ways, Chandrayaan-3 shows the way.